Hello, welcome to today's uh, Substance Painter tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at some cavity maps. Uh, so let me start a project. So I'll go File and, oops, not open. File and New. And I've got a little landscape uh, here that we can uh, do some experiments on. So I've got my object, uh, my dock resolution. I'm probably going to increase that to get a bit more uh, definition out of it. Everything else is fine. I'll click OK. Should come in any second. There we go. So I've got a nice kind of uh, rocky mountainy landscape, uh, which is used with the uh, or created with the bl uh, Blender terrain editor. And we're just going to bake the maps on this now. So if we go to bake mesh maps, 2048, I've got my ID off. Uh, my ambient occlusion is at uh, 0.5 and 1 or 0 0.005 rather and my curvature is at 256 and 0 0.005 so they're my basic standards uh, if you like so if we bake that then that will take a moment or two because it's a you know, bigger texture than normal and when we're finished we can start uh, putting things together be there in a sec nearly there there we go. Okay, so we've got our maps back now. Oh, maps baked now. And I'm just going to go to my layers directory and delete that one. And we're going to start off with two base layers. So I'll have one for my uh, general layer. This will be um, the base, um, what am I trying to say, material. Uh, I'm going to use this concrete for that, just to give myself a rocky kind of look. And it won't come up yet because the top material isn't in. Uh, I'm going to use a slightly off color concrete for that, or a different color concrete. Okay, first of all, I don't want these to really inter interfere with each other in terms of their heights. So I'm going to change the height channel and then switch that to normal. And we'll do the same for the normal channel. So switch the blend mode to normal. There we go. Okay, so what I want is essentially into the cavities of this model, uh, I want to put this browner material. So what we'll do is add in a black mask and then in that black mask we'll add a generator and then the generator we'll select is the mask editor. So that will immediately uh, Put a default in and you can see it's kind of coming on the peaks rather than the, the cavities so if i switch over to my mask it should be slightly easier to see and then we can go down and start to update our um, generator here so if i open up curvature you'll notice that curvature opacity is set to half i can increase that to one so it's stronger um, but we're also having an or using the edges mode and I can switch that to cavities dual unprocessed we're going to go and use cavities and you'll see that pretty much inverts it um, but it's, that's not quite true um, because we can adjust it to you know to work and work a bit better for us so I'm going to reduce all of these down to zero and then we'll gradually bring them up again. So that's it. Whoops, that's huge. Right, so I'm going to start off with the soft just to get an idea of what's going on. So that's a little bit too broad for me. So let's go to fine. That's too broad as well. And sharp. That's a little better, I think. There we go. So we've got some fairly broad areas where it's not touching. Uh, we've got the um, the ridges where it's completely not touching. And then we've got some gradiated sort of white to um, white to gray all over. So if I switch back now to go to my material view, that's what we get. So that's pr not bad actually, it's pretty much what I was looking for. A nice kind of blend between the two um, but we can still adjust this of course uh, so we can 
increases at uh, increase fine and it will make it stronger and soft and it will make it stronger still and more widespread so depending upon you know what you're after you can just adjust these to get somewhere near where you want there we go i think somewhere about there okay so what else do we need to do well we can do all sorts of things now that um, we've added that uh, we could duplicate this layer and start uh, start again uh, so what i want to do next is actually take the map we've got and adjust it and reduce it to darken some additional areas so we'll do that in the next section Okay, so let's duplicate this layer. Let's put this back to base color and duplicate the layer, wherever that's gone, there it is. And now on this top layer, I'm gonna darken this color. So let's uh, take that down this way a bit. You can see it's darkening up quite nicely, but I don't want it to completely overlay the light underneath. I want to, you know, merge it, you know, have a little bit of difference. So, if we go up to our mask editor, I can now open up curvature and reduce some of these sliders. Now, it might be a little difficult to see straight off the bat, uh, but it's much, much easier to do if we look at the, the mask. So as I'm bringing that down, you can see that comes right down. We've got fine. I want fine right, right down. And then I'm going to bring sharp up. And if I look at the other map, you'll see that that's much, much brighter. And that's much more subtle. So let's go back to our material layer. And now I think I'll just adjust this darkness even more to get a bit more contrast out of it. There we go. So now we can see some quite distinct dark areas and we've got some quite distinct lighter areas. There we go. Now, one thing I do want to do uh, for these maps or for both these maps is to add a blur element. So I'm just gonna right click here, add a filter and add blur. And then I'm gonna go to the mask view again and just increase this blur until it softens up quite nicely there we go and then i'll copy this uh, effect oops can i copy effect yes there it is and then i'll paste the effect here to do the same uh, for the the top and that should make it a little bit less abrupt shall we say oops wrong one there we go material there we go, much softer. If I turn these both off, you'll see the difference. You see it's it's quite a you know abrupt change between the two at the moment. Uh, but if I pop these on, it softens up quite nicely and merges in with the underlying material quite well. Okay, so uh, what should we do next? Uh, well, I think actually I want to put some... Uh, I do want to highlight these... Uh, ridges and things so we'll have a go at that next okay so i'll talk to you then okay so let's pop uh, another layer on there we go we'll just have a completely white layer to start with and then i'm going to right click on that and add a black mask and then we'll add a generator and we'll just use our old friend the mask editor there we go and now we've got um, well highlights across the peaks which is a little bit much uh, so let's um, adjust that down so let's go to the mask editor and head for curvature I'm going to start to just take all of these off to start with and then I'm just going to turn them back on again until I've got some I'm happy with so I'm going to start somewhere down at large and that's 
essentially just giving me those soft tops which is nice that's that's pretty much uh, what I want if we go and have a look at the mask itself we can see what that looks like uh, I can increase the contrast on this to make it a little bit more uh, oh no I don't want the contrast that's uh, the contrast is just basically taking it's just making it very hard uh, if I turn the brightness up that's going to include everything I'm going to take the brightness down a bit and let's pop in some other levels let's go a bit medium that will break it up a little bit and if I go soft that's going to start introducing some bits that I don't really want uh, so that gives me a you know a, a basic peaks and let's go and have a look at the material there we go that's not looking too bad at all uh, once again I'm going to add a blur to this so I'll add a filter and we'll add a blur and I'll increase that blur until it gets nice and soft and you know naturalistic so let's uh, start to turn these layers off to see uh, essentially what's happened so there we go that's those ones so that's our base material doesn't look uh, very exciting at all um, if I add that in then we get a bit of variation in color uh, I can always change this color of course there's no reason for me to leave it uh, at that uh, let's take some of the saturation out and make it a little darker oops there we go somewhere around there I'll add that to my little list down the bottom and then our next level is our slightly darker pass using slightly less um, you know um, a slightly less or a more sparse map that's what I'm trying to say and I'm going to go and select my previous there we go and then I'll just darken that up ever so slightly to give some additional contrast and then our uh, so these two are cavity layers this one is an edge layer and that's just picking up some highlights and going from there so um, that's a basic use for our cavity masks and you know it's very handy gives you a nice quick you know fairly good looking texture which you can go in and um, you know use and reuse of course um, if you saved it as a smart material uh, but I also want to show you that you can use these uh, layers for uh, other things for example painting so I will talk to you in the next section okay so um, before I start reusing these as painting I need to save them off so let me select our initial mask here so our initial mask no this is our initial mask so right click on that one and create a smart mask and lo and behold it will add it to my list over here and I'm going to rename it uh, MV uh, uh, cavity soft go and then I'll reuse this one right click and create smart mask and this one will be whoops right click uh, whoops MV whoops cavity soft small there we go So now I've got those, I can actually create a paint layer and you know, reuse them. So for example, over the top of all this, if I wanted to add some variation, actually it'd be between these layers. So let me add a paint layer in here. I'm going to find my cavity map. So let's type in cavity here, there we go. Uh, MV cavity, which one is which? That's one soft and that one's small. Let's have soft. So now 
I've masked this paint layer so that wherever I paint it's only really going to be painting in those soft cavities. I'm going to take the blur out of this one so let me go there and just take the blur off. And then go back to my paint layer and there you see. Now it uh, you know it's it's a little bit uh, tighter. So I can go to my brushes. Let's just take that off there and that off there. So I want a dirt brush. Let's just type in dirt up the top, and that's a dirt spots. I'll find a suitable material. Let's go find the material. Uh, actually, I could probably, uh, yeah. Sorry, just thinking, trying to be creative and failing miserably. Uh, la, 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 la. What do I want? Well, I think we're going to have to stick with concrete. Uh, I've all got a ground here. Ground gravel. So now I can paint across this and it's not going to enter into my peaks. It's only going to go into the cavities. So we can scatter this across, do whatever we want just to you know add a little bit of extra to our piece there we go you might see that you know you see we're getting some in there that's because we've got quite a soft map um, if I paint up here you see you know in the verges where the, the map is kind of you know going from white to black you know you'll get a little bit of uh, a little bit of mixing going on there we go so you know I've done it on a terrain but obviously you know you can do it on anything you want um, you could use it on you know very precise models you could use it on you know terrains like this or organics or anything you like but that's generally you know how we use uh, cavity maps so I hope you found that useful and uh, I will talk to you again in another set